My name is Paul Siegel. Uh, this is a Practitioner's Guide to TOGAF Framework. Nasser El Bata will be running the program. I will be doing a one or two minute presentation about us. So I understand a little about the organization that coordinates these things and uh, hopes to make you uh, more informed. We're an education provider providing professional education for large uh, organizations around the world. We do this um, in live and online format. Uh, we've pretty much done this on every continent in the world. Um, we do programs that are hands-on and interactive, taught by practitioners like Master, and are customized to the audience. Our core areas of these uh, five categories, cutting edge IT, enterprise IT, project management, finance and banking, those are the technical skills underpinning derivatives and credit risk management and things like that, as well as business skills programs. The vast majority of what we do is in person or online, but we also have a library that is quite rich and deep. Uh, so you can access these courses like here online. I want to remind you that in this program, uh, you'll be able to access a recording of this. You'll get an email afterwards. You can share that with your peers. Um, we always believe that uh, that's useful. At the same time, being here now and asking questions is part of the learning process. And I heavily encourage you to ask questions. Don't be shy. Um, and they say that the only stupid question is the question you don't ask. So uh, please ask questions. They're always helpful to you and others uh, that may be too shy as well. So we can run a variety of individual programs. Uh, these are at the Star Weaver Institute. I encourage you to participate. The one on Cyber Warrior Certification is actually a free one. Um, and one of the programs for that series, the seven-part series, will be tomorrow. And here again, you'll see those that have been done before the two, part one, part two. You can go back and review those. And if you complete all seven parts, um, whether or not you actually attend, as long as you pass the exam at the end, um, you get a certification as Cyber Warrior. It's a deep program, They're very rich. Let me jump again to what we're doing now. Again, we usually do programs at 11 and 1, um, sometimes at noon, like today. And um, we thank everyone for their time. Again, you can come to our website to see these. Uh, these are the courses that you'll get access to. You don't need to write them down. You can scan them briefly. You'll see there's a lot of FinTech courses here. But again, give us feedback. That's all we're asking for. Good, bad, indifferent. Let us know so we can improve what we do for you. That's the link. It's on the right chat box. Here's a little about Nasser. He'll tell you more about himself, but he is a guru in this space. Uh, he's been doing a lot of training in this world for us and for others. Um, I can say with a lot of authority, the programs are always well received and reviewed, so there is no question that uh, Nasser cannot answer in this space. Um, uh, if you have any questions, send us an email, um, ask questions, send it also to help desk at um, starweaver.com. I'm going to pass this off to Nasser now, and I uh, hope you have a great program, ask questions, and appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Nasser, it's yours. Thank you, Paul. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, depending uh, on where you are in uh, North America or the world. Um, my name is Nasser El Batal. Um, been in the IT industry for about 28 plus years in many different facets of the industry, uh, specifically best practices and relationships to international standards. IT service management frameworks, enterprise architecture frameworks, uh, 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 to mention a few. Also certified in DevOps, in uh, Agile Scrum, in uh, uh, ITIL, all the different certifications of ITIL, in uh, TOGAF, enterprise architecture, in ISO 20000, and the list goes on. Um, what I have put together here is uh, more of an introduction slash guide uh, uh, to uh, the TOGAF framework. So the term TOGAF stands for uh, the Open Group Architecture uh, Framework. So they basically collected the first letters of, of each word and created the acronym TOGAF as people know it uh, uh, today. Uh, TOGAF is trying to answer uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, demanding uh, questions to pretty much all the enterprises uh, in terms of delivery of business outcomes, aligning with strategy, uh, sustaining maturity, enabling business capabilities, business relationships, 
uh, uh, reducing cost and risks, uh, making sure, of course, that whatever the business direction is, is translated uh, in terms of deliverables uh, uh, at the end of the day through the enterprise IT uh, organization. So uh, uh, these are things that we all know, that we're all familiar with. Uh, uh, also uh, very important to have and or to follow a framework so that you, can, you are actually answering uh, a, a structured, right, or following a structured approach, uh, making sure that you're aligning with the, with the business, making sure that you're speaking the same common language across uh, the business. In order to do so, uh, you need to really uh, get your house in order. You can just, you know, parachute, TOGAF or, or ITIL or COBIT or any framework without making sure uh, that you have the appropriate environment uh, uh, to adopt, adapt, and eventually use that framework. So as you can see, we have a number of different considerations uh, a number of different frameworks and best practices uh, that you need to uh, put in place and effort, you know, for any of them for that fact to work properly. So TOGAF is not going to work, you know, without having project management. Uh, with, it's not going to work without having business analysis. Uh, it's not going to work if you don't have governance and operation management or if you don't have governance. So enabling that business transformation, enabling the delivery of business outcome is very much dependent on what combination of frameworks you have in place, especially those ones that support and enable enterprise architecture in terms of governance, business analysis, and IT uh, service management. So right off the bat, before we're saying, you know, TOGAF works or it doesn't work, successful or not successful, if you don't have these critical success factors in place, then none of these uh, uh, best practices and or framework would, would work in your respective organizations. So this is something very useful to keep in mind and, uh, 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 and to prepare for. What we have here is... Uh, the engine uh, behind the TOGA framework, we call this uh, 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 the architecture development method. Uh, what I've done, I added the green boxes to show you uh, how you are adapting, you know, the, the heart of TOGA with other best practices to make it work. So things as an example, capability maturity model. Or, uh, or COBIT uh, in relationship to governance, or uh, business relationships and business analysis in support of your uh, uh, business strategy and architecture vision, uh, or ITIL and project management to enable transition. So very quickly, again, to show you that what you currently have will very much enable uh, uh, your approach to enterprise architecture as an example, right? Also very useful and very important that you actually transform, um, let's call it the, 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 the basic model or the basic TOGAF model into your own so that you are benefiting uh, from the uh, uh, framework as much as possible. It's not a one-size-fits-all. It's not a cookie cutter for every organization to use it the same way. As you notice very quickly, even though in the center of all of this activity, you've got uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the architecture development uh, method, as I showed you in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, uh, slide, but there is quite a bit, right, of relationship and interaction that you would have, as I showed you, uh, in, in many other uh, 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 areas and many other uh, frameworks to sustain and to enable your business capability and business capability management. So uh, very uh, uh, useful and very 
uh, important uh, again to make it uh, to make it your own. TOGAF today is at version 9.1. This, uh, uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, is an evolution from, you know, a few earlier versions, of course, from version 8 and eventually from version uh, 9. So between the two, there was some adjustments, some uh, 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 clarification, some corrections, and so on. And as such, they introduced 9.1. Uh, currently, TOGAF is undergoing another uh, review, uh, but don't don't be concerned. That nothing is going to be introduced uh, uh, in the next six months or in the next year. Uh, there's still a lot of work uh, uh, to do on that uh, uh, front. So when we're talking about TOGAF, what is TOGAF? As I said, it's an enterprise architecture framework based on the open group. Uh, uh, approach, uh, mindset. Uh, the open group themselves is basically an organization, a global organization, uh, where you have many members associated with many uh, uh, different sections of the industry, where eventually they came to consensus that, you know, TOGAF is one of the best ways to perform enterprise architecture. So TOGAF included some previous, you know, uh, background from a number of uh, other uh, frameworks and or international standards to get it where it is today. Uh, the one aspect of TOGAF that makes it, you know, extremely successful is what I just showed you as the enterprise or rather as the architecture development method, as we call it, the ADM. Uh, also is known as the heart of uh, uh, the framework. So these are the different aspects, the different components, if you wish, as to what uh, TOGAF looks like in terms of structure. So we have part one, which is not listed here. Part one is introduction. And then we have part two. Again, this is the heart, right? So this is where all your activities, processes, right, will be uh, performed. And then everything else, being it, you know, part three, part four, part five, you know, part six and seven, basically they're all there to support and enable. Eventually when you reach part seven, right, that's an indication that you now have the capability to actually uh, 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 deliver you know, the enterprise architecture in alignment, of course, with business uh, strategy, with business needs and business requirement. So this diagram is showing you where we are now and potentially where we want to be as a target and how you're going to, how you're going to get there or how we're going to bridge the gap through basically this entire set of information or entire set of activities and enabling uh, 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 components as established in the uh, in the uh, TOGAF uh, framework. TOGAF talks to four specific domains, four layers. So basically, if we're saying business strategy, right? Your business strategy is introduced, right, in four layers, in business architecture, in application architecture, information and or data architecture, and eventually in technical architecture. Some people will, will debate uh, what, is, what is security, uh, what is, you know, uh, some other domains and so on. From a TOGAF perspective, these are the four layers or the four domains that are recognized to be used and or followed. For each and every one of them, there is security consideration, 
for each and every one of them, again, there is security work, security artifacts, and security uh, considerations. So something to keep in mind. They don't look at security as an additional domain. They look at it as a consideration within each and every domain. Similar if and when you're going to follow a uh, 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 service uh, 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 um, oriented architecture style, the same consideration, the same consideration, and so on and so forth. So they don't look at it as an additional domain. They look at it as an architectural style, and they look at it with the perspective of additional and or different artifacts and building blocks that you need to consider moving through those domains. So what you see on the screen here, this is a reflection or, or, a, or a graphical representation of uh, those different components that we just saw in the previous uh, uh, diagram. So the ADM or the architecture development method, as I mentioned, this is the heart. The architecture content framework, this goes hand in hand with the ADM. This is the companion, right? Call it ADM companion, because as an example, let's assume that I'm confused. I don't know what to generate in terms of the work products as we go through the ADM cycle. Well, this content framework will very quickly direct you in terms of what you should generate as work products, what you should generate as building blocks, depending on the domain that you're working with. So whether you are working business or working data and application or working application, also it gives you an indication in terms of the capabilities and the governance areas that you're working with and what you would be generating in terms of work products. So very quickly, you know, one of the benefits of TOGAF is that it's not just a framework, it also provides you the step-by-step -step approach, a methodology approach. For those of you who, who may not be familiar, also the open group provides a wealth of sample artifacts and deliverables that you can actually uh, use if and when you are initiating an enterprise architecture uh, 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 practice within your own organization. The reference model, right, these are the examples that TOGAF introduced. We, this one is what we call technical reference model, and this one application reference model. It's known as integrated information infrastructure reference model. Now, these are the ones that TOGAF is referencing just for your general knowledge, but you can go out in the industry, and from the industry, you can actually bring in you know, a wealth of additionals, right? So let's call them more reference models, depending on the scope of work that you are uh, 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 working with and or introducing. Another section or component of the framework is when we're talking about, you know, things like guidelines and techniques. So the guidelines is basically the what, and the techniques are the how. An example here is how you run in multiple ADMs if you have multiple linked projects together. You know, how you manage stakeholders, what are the different categories, and what are the different types of stakeholders. This is going to be very useful, so eventually you can use it to do uh, uh, stakeholder mapping, right? as you are trying to figure out you know, why you are uh, working the specific architecture. So you need to talk to the appropriate people and you will need to map the stakeholders. Also gives you some reference on the continuum, which is gonna give you kind of a snapshot in any given point in time on the status 
of the different reference models and or building blocks that you might have so from the foundational let me clean this up can you tell i like playing with colors so from the foundational point of view the basic reusable you know uh, uh, reference model and as you are evolving you know all the way to becoming specific to the organization needs and once all of this is said and done at the end of the day this is going to be physically supported by a tool or an integrated set of tools you know we call them the architecture repository all right so all of this is going to be listed and or part of that architecture repository eventually once all of this all of these different sections are done properly right right then you would have the ability uh, to claim that you know what we now have the architecture capability framework and we have a certain level of maturity you know with the right skills with the right knowledge with the right tools and effort or in order to deliver our architecture as uh, 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 required by the business and business strategy one of the critical success factors in all of this is to establish the appropriate governance model and governance structure um, otherwise it's not going to work especially I mean here it gives you the, the the implication right that we have right enterprise architecture we have project or program management and we have IT service management right and you need to have the proper governance environment for all of them because they support they use you know they conform they align with each other especially things like the architecture board uh, or things like the change advisory board uh, or uh, things like your uh, PMO right where, where where you are establishing your your governing bodies to deal with the different concerns at each one of these different levels and or layers in support of all of this at the bottom of the slide we talk about the continuum again and the continuum of course is gonna uh, list and is gonna classify all the appropriate building blocks that you're gonna need in effort to provide governance examples standard regulatory requirements agreements and so on and so forth The approach of the ADM or the architect is basically dividing the uh, model to a few uh, 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 useful segments, to say to say the least. Uh, one actually is not listed here. Let's call it capability, right? Capability architecture iteration or capability iteration. And this is established at this point between the preliminary or the preparation phase and the vision or the project charter phase. All right. So this is one area, one segment. And then let's do it this way. So, right. And then you have another segment that we talk about architecting or developing the architecture here you have the four domains that we talked about you have the business which is one and then you have data you have application again two and three and you notice here that they are both in one phase and finally you have you know the domain number four which is technology architecture. Another phase of the ADM is when we're talking about uh, 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 implementation planning and uh, 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 solutioning, right? And finally, when we talk about governance and control. So this is, you know, about implementation, planning, and 
solutioning and this is about governance and oops this is about governance and control all right now these are very important considerations you know for the ADM because also this is going to enable you to manipulate to tweak to tailor so this is a tailorable if my spelling is correct it's a tailorable model so you can decide to blend all of these together you can decide to blend these two together you can decide to eliminate one or or another whatever the case may be right it's scalable as well depending on your organization so you don't take this as a cookie cutter approach all right this is not a cookie cutter approach so sorry about that what I highlighted in red on, on some specific phases, as you see over here, is that this is not only about enterprise architecture uh, activities, it's also about business analysis. And it depends really on the organization, whether the organization is big and complex and so on, then you're gonna have lots of different roles and some of these roles are going to be business analysts roles. If you don't have the, 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 the size and the money and so on, then this is an opportunity for you to tailor or you adapt the ADM. And then as an architect, you will be carrying or, or, or wearing, you know, double hats, if not triple hats. And then you would be performing these activities. What you notice here in, in, in terms of the paper clips, it looks like a paper clips, these are iterations, right? So as an example, part of the practice is that we are going to do a review at the end of each phase, right? We're gonna review with the stakeholders whether we basically are delivering what we are set out to deliver. It, if the review is successful, we do the happy dance and we move to the next phase. If the review is not successful, so here we're okay. And let's assume that here we're not okay. So if we're not okay, then basically we have to iterate until we become okay. In other words, until your stakeholders are happy with the result of what you have established right so this is one instant where you are iterating around a phase another instant is where you are iterating around two phases like we're showing in the governance right or even around the entire development phases so from basically business architecture all the way to migration planning right phase so now you have the ability to go back and forth, to integrate, to check, to minimize risk, uh, uh, to revisit if there is a change in requirement, whatever the case may be. One of the reasons we're doing this, just to give you a quick uh, view of it, you know, for each of the phases, we are establishing current situation and we are documenting target situation. And there will be a gap between the two. And for each gap, that means potentially that there is a new requirement. So as there is a new requirement, there will be now, you know, an addition to the center phase, right? There will be an additional item. So you want to make sure that you have the ability to iterate so that you tweak and you're adjusting basically the work that you are doing because of the discovered, the newly discovered or the new you know, uh, uh, tweaked or added or whatever the case type of requirements. As the ADM is, is uh, moving, you are generating artifacts. You are generating 
catalogs, you are generating diagrams, you are generating matrices that are describing, right, what your building blocks or what your stakeholder building blocks going to look like. So if your stakeholder is a business related stakeholder, then, you know, these are the, the type of artifacts that you may be generating. And, and by the way, you're not going to generate all of them. Depending on different stakeholders, you may be generating different types of artifacts. We also call them viewpoints. The artifact is detailing the viewpoint, right? And the collection of viewpoints will give you the view that will satisfy the stakeholder. So other stakeholders may be in application, and then you know the artifacts in applications are more relevant, and so on and so forth. So again, TOGAF is giving you the list of the different you know, artifacts, and actually they're giving you examples. You know, if anybody would like a copy of these examples, please communicate with Paul and we'll be more than happy to give you access to an FTP site where you can download them. Or you can go to the open group, right? So basically go into opengroup.org and uh, uh, you can uh, uh, download, do the search and download. All right, uh, Rand or, or uh, would uh, provide you that link, or or Paul would provide you the link. A very useful. I mean, I mean, we've been talking about you know the ADM because the ADM is the heart. But don't forget, number one, the ADM is a set of processes, set of phases. You could, as a matter of fact, let me go back here for a second. You could use this, you know. So now let's call it, I have an architecture project, right? And the project phases, right, are basically what you see in the ADM. Yeah, so phase one, phase two, et cetera, phase A, B, C, D, all of which are different phases of your architecture project. There is no more development after migration planning. This is where your architecture development stops. The next two phases basically are checking what you have in the live or operational environment and doing the oversight on whether you know what you delivered is up to par in alignment of the architecture or not all right so again this is a, a very important consideration as to how you transform your business strategic plan right all the way down to IT deliverables and building blocks, right? So how are you going to go from this point to that point? Well, your corporate strategic plan has goals and objectives, which basically, you know, will manage and create your uh, business outcome or business capabilities. Those capabilities are consistent of different bits and pieces. We call them increments which are associated, each of the increment is related to a set of deliverables or building blocks. So how are you going to do this? Well, in very simple terms, you're going to follow the architecture development method in effort to get to that point. So we're going, you know, throughout the ADM, right? the different phases and how the different phases are basically supporting and or articulating the different architectures, you know, uh, uh, architecture projects uh, and eventually architecture definitions, uh, uh, architecture uh, uh, artifacts, building blocks, all the way, right, to becoming, right, so those building blocks eventually become solutions, and this is what basically you're going to be delivering 
you know, in your live environment day in and day out. Of course, I mean, along the way we talk about uh, 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 efficiency, quality, and effectiveness. So you need to establish metrics and KPIs to make sure that, you know, different stakeholders are getting what they're asking for and that you are delivering accordingly. Um, why having a reference model? Well, the usual standard, the common language, uh, reusable patterns, reusable, you know, activities, reusable artifacts, right? Always in alignment, you know, hopefully with the business. And you need to establish certain modeling techniques uh, that, that will uh, 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 basically explain what you want, right, in a, in a very uh, simplified manner. As we say, uh, a picture is worth a, a thousand words. And the different modeling techniques range from UML to BPMN to, uh, to, to many aspects, including the latest and greatest, you know, as we call it, Archimate. Again, if you go to the open group, there is downloadables that can explain, you know, this model to you. And, of course, along the way, there is correlation and or alignment with many right, of these different uh, 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 frameworks and or uh, uh, best practices uh, from uh, not just enterprise architecture point of view, but also from a service management uh, point of view as well. Um, so this is actually uh, 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 associated with public sector and or governments, usually depending on the jurisdiction you know, uh, uh, this is going to be associated on one hand from a provider point of view with the accountability from the uh, customer or stake, stakeholder point of view with what the outcome is going to look like. And we're establishing, you know, the programs which are reflective of different services, different, you know, uh, deliverables, processes, resources, and so on and so forth all of which is going to be reflected in your enterprise architecture framework, model, uh, uh, deliverables, right, to show at the end of the day, you know, what it means. This is another, this is another one of these models. I mean, I'm not going to get into all the specifics, but there are many different public sector models. Again, the reason as to why we use the uh, 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 modeling approach is because, you know, we want to communicate the change properly and we want to be able to have a common language to transform and to enable, right? Um, different, you know, architecture uh, 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 solutions. Again, when we're talking about patterns, when we're talking about business transformation, especially, you know, uh, uh, things like interoperabilities, right? Uh, you need to be concerned with that from a data, from a service, from a process, or even from a, a hardware, uh, a potentially, uh, a, a hardware point of view. And this, of course, will enable you to save time and effort and minimize the cost, right? This is an example of business analysis. Uh, as I said, this is something that you want to keep an eye on and something to follow. Uh, the one that is known in the industry probably more than anything else is the IIBA uh, alignment. So it's business analysis based on the IIBA type of overall approach. You can also go to IIBA.org. to register and download the framework, you know, to give you an idea as to uh, what it's all about. And then you need to figure out, uh, first of all, these dates are really kind of, take them with a grain of salt because they really depend on uh, uh, the size, the complexity of your uh, organization 
uh, of course, the size and the complexity of your project or your programs. Um, if anybody is familiar with ITOL, this is our continual service improvement, but you can ignore the title and you can follow the approach in effort to improve your enterprise architecture uh, practice. Still the same type of uh, uh, concerns, try to understand strategy and vision, you know, your baseline, your target, how you're gonna get there, how do you confirm that you got there, and eventually how you keep the momentum uh, 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 going. All right, so at a high level, one more thing before you know we see if you have any questions is setting up the right uh, skills. So you have a number of different categories of skills that TOGAF introduces for you. You need to figure out which skills you have or which skills you're lacking, and from there on you establish right a certain level of proficiency you know this is color coded to show as an example that this individual is at an expert level right and we need we need this title to be at an expert level so you know the numbers here reflect you know the lowest to the highest in other words the lowest yeah, I have some sort of a background and so on and so forth, where the highest become, you know, uh, 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 at the expert level. So these are things that you need to consider. Of course, you need to also consider additional capabilities, being it program or project management. I talked about that. I talked about business. Uh, I talked about the skill sets that you're going to need you know, as a consultant and, and or as a, a an architect. With that, I'm open, you know, for any questions that you might have. Thanks very much, Nasser. Uh, it's Paul again. Please uh, text your questions, or rather uh, chat your questions in the right, right window. Um, Nasser covers a lot in a very short period of time. Um, obviously, there are courses that support this and are um, additional to this. Kind of education, but it's a great way of jumping in, understanding what uh, TOGAF is all about and what the frameworks do and provide an organization. And our experience is that there's been um, both a lot of value in terms of individuals who have these skills and therefore become moving to leadership positions as well as compensation, you know, better compensation for these kinds of skills. So um, we'll keep it open for a few minutes. If you answer questions, please don't be shy. Um, I should just tell you that uh, um, Nestor knows this a lot better than I do, but there's um, a detailed in-depth course, but also if you want to take the certification, it's a um, level one, level two um, examination. We cover that, and Nestor covers that in his programs, which I highly recommend. Um, guidelines to get TOGAP certification. Uh, Nestor, maybe we'll just I was leading into that, taking the test. Um, uh, we have a question that's, uh, can you describe the guidelines to get the TOGAF certification? All right. Um, so what I would suggest is the following. Uh, we have a program called Combined Certification. So in other words, TOGAF combined certification. Let's not forget TOGAF. What this program does, it gives you two certifications blended into one exam. We have what we call level one or considered the foundation or the basic, and then level two or as considered you know, certified or similar to other certifications is like practitioner. But the term they use is certified. Once you've done the course, you sit a combined 
exam where you're going to do both levels in one sitting. All right? The first one is 60 minutes plus 15 if English is not your first language, 40 questions, a closed book, right? The second one is 90 minutes plus 30 minutes plus 30 if English is not your first language, eight questions, scenario based, open book. This is done, the exam that is, is done at a Pearson View, right? So the exam itself is done at a Pearson View certified uh, testing center. And uh, once you're successful, uh, you will uh, receive an email from the open group with uh, questions whether you want to be listed on their website. Uh, they give you a copy of your certification to print. Uh, and uh, basically, it's a great addition to your CV. And as Paul mentioned, also uh, may command additional compensation depending you know, on, on your employment and or the type of services that you offer. Any other questions? Yeah, Master, if you could uh, question him in about enterprise architects and describe the role that an enterprise architects play in an organization and, and their function. So the enterprise architect is the individual uh, uh, concerned, responsible, or even accountable uh, uh, to deliver uh, uh, the enterprise architecture, as simple as that. They could sit at the architecture uh, 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 review board. Uh, they will uh, guide junior architects to following the ADM. Uh, they can uh, be, become a point of escalation. They need to have, of course, knowledge specific to the different architectural domains that uh, TOGAF uh, 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 introduces and or requests. Usually this is not a junior uh, or even an intermediate uh, position. This is more, I would say, uh, uh, of a senior uh, position. Uh, not necessarily senior in age, but senior in expertise. Any other question? Oh, also, just uh, maybe you could talk about how a circuit, uh, maybe this, what's the connection between a software architect and an enterprise architect? So, the, 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 let me go back here for a second. Let's clean this up. When we're talking about business architecture, usually we're talking about business processes. We're talking about uh, uh, organization structure. We're talking about uh, uh, roles, responsibilities, right? We're talking about value chain. We're talking about customer uh, uh, journey, customer experience, et cetera. In uh, data and application, data, we're looking at data uh, engineering, data migration, data management type of architecture work. The application, right, is again more relevant around the application uh, 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 structure, you know, services, um, interoperability of data associated with with that, right? Technology is more around, as you know, all the technologies. So anything associated with infrastructure type, you know, technologies. So this is what we consider the uh, 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 conceptual right conceptual come on 
consideration. When we're looking at a specific software, right, or a specific hardware, or a specific anything, right, in terms of solution, right, so now you're no longer developing the architecture building block, but you're rather developing what we call the solution building block. The, the relationship between the two is that the architecture building blocks is what we have seen in, in phase B, C, and D is going to be guiding right, what you see as the solution building blocks in phase E and is going to be supported or enabled by you know that solution building block. So if you say I'm a software architect, well, technically speaking, you're a solution designer, right? So you are basically architecting the software in support of what the architecture building block has been defined. Any other questions? Seems like that's it for now. Um, again, I encourage everyone to uh, stay involved, give us feedback. Um, if you're interested, contact us. If you have a few people, um, please let us know. Um, and um, actually, there's one more question here about illicit building blocks. Not sure exactly what that means. Um, but, what? Um, Sorry. Illicit building blocks. Illicit building blocks? Uh, maybe, Shekhar, if you can be a little more clear about what specifically you're looking for, we can answer that question. I mean, one of one of the, uh, uh, if I may, I think I think I know what what he's trying to to ask. But one of the things that you are capturing from stakeholders is, you know, requirements. So when we say you're you're eliciting requirements, you're trying to collect requirements, and those requirements eventually is going to be associated with architecture building blocks and or solution building blocks. But we cannot jump to conclusion to say, you know, ignore what the architecture is going to look like. Let's just give you the solution side of things, right? You still have to perform the architecture building blocks, right? Or in other words, introduce the work package associated with the architecture building blocks, right? As well as the solution that's going to enable it. So I, you know, it's like it's, it's like saying, you know, here's a tool that's going to enable you to manage process, but I don't know what the process is. So the tool is the solution building block, but the actual process is the architecture building block that may be elicited as a requirement from the stakeholders. Okay. All right. So we've covered it a lot in a long time. I say we meaning master really. Um, great program. Um, and again, I think it's the tip of the iceberg of what is a very big iceberg, as you can well imagine, since what what master has covered is is um, very detailed. And I, I strongly encourage you, if you have some more questions and would like to reach out, send us a message, uh, connect up with us, let us know that maybe you or a team people need some further delving into this, and Nasser is the person to do it for you. So thank you again, Nasser. Uh, great program, and appreciate everyone's feedback again on the um, link we provided. Have All a great right. day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Nasser. Take care. Bye-bye.